In a distant land, in a distant time, there was a prophecy that twins would bring down the evil ruler of the land. The queen of the time decided to take no chances, so she decreed any twins that were born should be put to death. A loving couple gave birth to twin girls. They didn't want them put to death, so they sent one through a portal to a different realm with a nursemaid. But as fate would have it, the nursemaid arrived 100 years before the baby. So the child grew up not knowing who she was or what she was. Hello, my name is Jenny Ivans and I'm a mind drawing artist who created the Fairies Without Wings, a body of work to accompany a book, well, the first of three books of a fantasy series called Fairies Without Wings. Now, due to the oops, circumstances of COVID-19, my exhibition did not go ahead at gate six as planned. So I'm presenting it this way. This drawing was inspired by the foliage at um, Heritage Hill in Dandenong, where Laurel Lodge is situated, the place where the baby was left on the doorstep. You notice a different quality of line here between the drawings that were done using the foliage as a reference. The gardens used to leave the different samples of prunings and things, interesting seed pods on the doorstep in a basket that I left there. It was always exciting to see what I would find. And then there are some looser lines as well in which you can see many things. These pictures are on A5 paper. Many of the works were inspired by the gardens at Heritage Hill and Lower Lodge. But also largely they came from my imagination. The way I approached drawing and mind drawing is by creating marks and looking into what I have drawn. Oops, I skipped one. Never mind. I'll come back to it. There are many stories within each picture. And depending where your focus lies, you'll see different things from the same lines. The icons which, which keep appearing in my drawings, sometimes just because they're fun to draw, other times because the shape suggests them. You'll see lots of faces. I often draw trees and I always hide an iconic four-leaf clover. The reason I do that is because I quite often find four-leaf clover. Now that's one we've already seen. So let's switch to the next one. I have, I'm not showing you the framed work because the glass in the frame gives, reflects the light and it doesn't give a very good picture. Although I will show you some at the end. This video is part one of all the portrait orientated drawings. In part two, I'll show you the landscape ones. I wonder what you see in these drawings. 
thing about my drawings is there's no right or wrong way to see anything. It's whatever you see. Some of them are more literal, like this one. But even then, if you look closely into the bricks of the tower, you'll see other shapes. And all the drawings tell a story. I'm a writer as well as an illustrator. And as such, I run occasional writing workshops and I like to use my, my drawings as story starters to inspire people. I look into the picture and see different things. I find crowns quite often appear in my drawings. Teacups, snails. Although I must admit the snails were a little bit inspired by my fellow writer, my Lazy River writer, Vicki Morton, who was on the another retreat with me at uh, Police Point. Now this is an example of a mind drawing, a very good example of what the lines are like. Where you look on one side of the line, you see one face. Look on the other side of the line, you see another. So the one line can represent two different things. And that's why I don't colour the pictures. Oh, okay, so this one wasn't going to necessarily get framed because it didn't quite represent the uh, actual door and porch of Laurel Lodge. But you can see the basket there with the baby left on the porch. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is a four size. This one, you'll notice somewhere there, I have a saying written in it. Oh yeah, I see it. It's there. I started a series of works with a Latin saying, which I'm not going to try to say because I don't speak Latin. This one means mind. <laughs> I can't remember. Mind moves matter. There we go. Some of the pictures could be seen on other angles and still make sense too. So I'll turn the picture around. See how it becomes a bit of a landscape. So this way, and I ended up as a tree. It might even make sense that way a bit too. Toadstools. I have a friend who likes to send me photos of toadstools. We both love them. They are feature in some of the drawings. Another thing you'll find in the drawings are archways. This one is Remember to Live. And you'll see different children's games. Things here. I think it's especially important now during COVID-19 days when people are pretty solemn with isolation and feeling the stress of it. So it's important to find joy in the days. I'll talk more about that in a minute. This one, see that again, portal you see through to another realm but the interesting thing here if I turn this around you see the chap looking around the corner here this is his nose looking this way I actually didn't intend to put him in there I was drawing the island in a, str in a stream a lake whatever and when I looked more closely I thought oh look looks different so it's nice to turn the pictures around and see what's there too when they're hanging in the gallery you won't get to do that you'd have to turn your head on the side but there's always a lot to see in the drawings 
and whatever you see or notice first is perfectly fine. Never despair. Or is that they can because they think they can? I might have, yeah, I think this one is they can because they think they can. The one before was never despair. You see, when you look further back, it's got a different picture. When you come in close, you see different things. And the reason I do that is because I want people to. Look at things outside their normal setting and see them differently. It's a little bit like when you're looking at clouds, you can see pictures in the clouds. This one has a bit of a tunnel away to somewhere. Leave a lot to the imagination. And the scale will quite often change within the drawing too. I'm recording this at 1.45 a.m. because my home is also uh, my husband's office during the day, granddaughter's schoolroom. My son lives here too, so although he has been working away from home, it's the type of work he does. But it does get noisy here in the day. many artists I had the exhibition I was going to present in May which is this body of work cancelled along with a month of workshops so of course that had an impact on my practice too and I found I really tested the equipment I already had um, which I was grateful to have but it um, wasn't the best for presenting the exhibition the way I wanted to. When I'm happy with this, I can actually talk you through different pippings in the pictures. The date there, 1869, relates to when Laurel Lodge was built. And in the story, it's also when the nursemaid arrived in our realm. People often tell me they see different things the more they look in the drawings, which I think makes the drawings more valuable. And people who've bought my paint at drawings and have put them on the wall tell me when they go past they see something new, even though it's been hanging there for months. One lady has a childcare job and she said she often has the children looking in the pictures to find things. And there's a few wells that I've drawn. This one I wasn't sure which way it was going to go at first. 
So it also makes sense a little bit this way too. We've got a bit of a clothesline there. But then when I turn it back the other way, that makes sense too. There's the clothesline sideways. And you can see a couple of people sitting there. larger ones. These are a three in size. This one started with a reference drawing of the eucalyptus leaves and nuts. And some of these other lines suggested other things to me. Like a foot or fingers. Then we get down to this level and we see the river. And a face on the mountain. There's a shoe up there too. Yes, shoes surprised me. I didn't really intend to put so many shoes in my work, but they seem to be appearing all over the place. And then yes, big face. I don't know if you see that one there. The white one. Okay. I've got this one. This was one I did at Heritage Hill during my residency there. And the colours I used in this one actually came from one of the other artists in residence. When she was uh, cleaning up her paints, I used the end of the paints rather than have them wasted, I put them on the paper and later I looked at what was there and drew into them as the shapes suggested pictures to me. This next one was actually done with ink first and again the as in coloured inks from a stamp pad or several stamp pads and then I looked into the marks and embellished what I could see there so it could become clear to others. I do like colour in my work, but as soon as I colour it in, it says, look at this side of the line or that side of the line. It gives you fewer choices. And then it's really interesting looking into the pictures and seeing stories. Some of these things will inform my uh, series of books and fantasies, others not so much maybe, who knows. And the last one I'll show you here. Okay. Again, depending where you look, see different things in the same lines. Here's 1869 again. I did created these works over many months and looking back at them you know I discover things myself as if I'm seeing them for the first time even though I drew them. Did you see that change? We did for me anyway. So there was a, a bit of a, a lady there carrying books. And then suddenly her body became 
I covered that up as well. But Dana Nan leaning over. And then if I go back further again, suddenly I can see more of a kangaroo shape here. There's a pen over there representing my writing. With a dragon wing there, flag. Mushrooms again. Now I'm going to show you one of the framed drawings, but bear with me because there, there will be a reflection. I'll go back to like a, oh, you can see me in that. <laughs> girls looking down into another realm there. These drawings are done with a 0 0.05 pen, drafting pen, or camera shading, sorry. Or sometimes a 0.1 if I want to go a bit bigger. There's a dragon. This interesting shape here, which you'll see again in some of my other pictures. And then the last one I'll show you. I'll go back to that while I'm picking up the frame up. that was in the exhibition at Heritage Hill. This one was inspired by a tree root on the Verficus. Oh, they had two amazing, or still have, two amazing fig trees there. Lots of cubby holes, nice places you can hide in there. Leaves with the holes, the elm leaves. They had a few, they were on beetle, unfortunately. But it made the leaves really interesting with all the holes in them. So this one is a butylon. I, I accidentally thought it was other flowers, but the creature looked just like that in the photo. So of course I had to draw it. A poppy. I was there in for a residency in November, December and January, which is late spring, early summer, midsummer. In Australia. It was a good season to be there but we had all weathers. It, uh, it had torrential rain some days and thunderstorms and flooding and other days it was oh, I think it got to 103 or 4 or 5 in the studio so it wasn't really viable to work there that day. But it all added to the story. There were so many strange things that happened while we were there, which you'll find in the book. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for this one. And join me for the second part of the exhibition, which will be the landscape shots. Thank you.